Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we are doing a reading vlog, and not just any reading vlog, we are doing a pet sitting vlog. Nicole is back, or rather, I am back with Nicole. So we'll be pet sitting her this weekend, and we're gonna be reading three cozies with some heavy animal influences, because I thought, why not just theme out this entire weekend? Sounds fun to me. So I have three selections here. I'm gonna show you what we've got. The first one is one that I've had several of you recommend. I've heard nothing but good things about. And that is the Cat in the Stacks mystery series. This is the first one, Murder Past Due. It's by Miranda James. And basically this takes place in Athena, Mississippi. Our main character is Charlie. He has a Maine Coon cat. I've never met one of these in person, but they look so cute. And they're huge apparently. They're like up to 30 pounds or something for a cat. It's incredible. And our cat here is Diesel, and he goes everywhere with Charlie, and Charlie's like, I think he like works at or volunteers at like a library, like maybe he archives things or something like that. And basically he has this old classmate from high school come back, Godfrey. And Godfrey is a famous writer now. He's very successful. They're hosting like a dinner for him at the college where Charlie works as like this librarian. And he, has rubbed a lot of people the wrong way and that's kind of where the mystery starts. I am so excited. I've heard nothing but good things from this. I think I might start with this book. I'm so excited about all of them but this one sounds so good and I, I just can't wait to meet Diesel. He looks adorable. The next one is part of a series that I have read before and I really enjoyed. That is the Scottish Shire mystery series by Tracy Hall. So this is book three in the series. It's Murder at a Scottish Shire. I got this for Christmas. This and book Four, which is Murder at a Scottish Wedding. So I really want to read those throughout like spring and summer because I feel like it just feels like the wedding. And like, I don't know, this one here looks very springy. There's like spring in the background here. So we have our dog for the theme and his name is Wallace. He's a Scottish Terrier. Our main character is Paisley Shaw and she is like 28, 29 years old. She's got like a 10 year old son named Brody and her grandfather also lives with her. This is a super family centric cozy. I love the family dynamics with this. So she's a single mother, she has Brody and then her grandfather also lives with them because in the first book he was kind of down on his luck. So he ends up moving in with them. They don't really know each other that well. So you're kind of getting to see them their relationship blossom and it's really beautiful. But Paisley owns Cashmere Crush, which is a like yarn knitting shop. So she sells like all these different like yarns and stuff. She knits like cashmere handmade sweaters and things like that. And for this one, she's actually participating in this like Scottish social, but it's like a charity event and she's gonna be auctioning off a cashmere sweater for like a food bank. She's really hoping to raise money and stuff like that. And of course, someone ends up dying there. There's also like a bake sale or something like that. So there might be a little bit of a competition element, which I always love. So I'm very excited for this one and I love Scottish Terriers. They are the cutest little guys. I don't know if I could have one because it'd be so much hair. I think they would, I feel like they must shed a lot. I don't know. Let me know if you've had one. Do they shed a lot? They look like they might shed a lot with that kind of coat, but they're so beautiful. Do you want to say hi to the camera? <laughs> Nicole says, ow. <laughs> Nicole says hello to YouTube. She says hello on her own snorty. And then last but not least, this one is a pet shop mystery. So I thought that would be about as animal centric as you could get for a cozy. This is called The Time for Murder is Meow, a purr and bark pet shop mystery by TC Lotempio. This is the first in the series. I checked this out from my library. I think it's an older cover, but really, really cute. And I think, is this like a, a mouse on the cover? I thought it was a hamster at first, but it has a tail. So I think it's a mouse or a rat, I don't know. I don't know much about rodents. They kind of, they're not my favorite kind of pet. I, I prefer the cat and dog <laughs> variety myself. But this one's really cute. So our main character is Shell. The show got canceled. She's gonna take over her aunt's pet shop and she's gonna kind of redefine herself. She's excited for this challenge and she gets a unique request. She's asked by a local museum if they can exhibit her aunt's like Cary Grant posters. So I guess they're kind of, they're vintage or something, or maybe they have a relevant exhibit. So she's like, sure, that's great. But one of the board members turns her down and later on she finds that board member dead and she's one of the suspects because they're like, well, maybe you killed her, which seems like a little bit of a, seems like a stretch to me to kill someone over a poster being part of an exhibit, but you know, whatever. <laughs> so I'm really excited for this. It looks super cozy. She has a cat and then she also, it says, 
So she has a Siamese cat named Kalua, and then her new sidekick is her aunt's Persian named Purdy, which I love. So I'm very excited for this. I don't know if there's any dogs in this. I don't know if we're gonna get mice or rodents. There's a bird up here. So I feel like we're gonna get a nice variety of animals. So these are our selections. We're gonna have, I'm so excited. We're gonna make sliders tonight. We're gonna do pet sitting. We're gonna open a bark box that her pet parents left and I'm super excited. So let's hop in. All right, we are gonna open Nicole's bark box now. Her pet parents left this for her. Here we go. What's in it? <gasps> let's see. Ooh. That looks good. All right, oh, what's this? Oh my gosh, is that a squirrel? <laughs> Do you want it? No, okay. Oh, you want the, uh, oh my goodness, <laughs> the toot loops. Okay, we got that. We got this cute little flying squirrel. Oh, she likes that. And then we got a couple bags of treats. We got cheesy peasy soft bakes. I know she likes those. Buddy nutties. And this one I'm not even gonna say, but it's pretty funny. <laughs> okay, let's get her some. Okay, here's a cheesy peasy bake. You don't want it? I think she liked it. I think she liked it. All right, so I think the bark box was a success. I am enjoying this so much. I am about 80 some pages in the books close to 300 so I'm getting close to the like third way mark I love Charlie he is so well spoken he's very eloquent he's very thoughtful I like how he doesn't rush into things he's very methodical he really thinks things through he really values other people's opinions he's very proper I would say he's like truly like a southern gentleman he's kind of close to 50 I want to say is what the book said so he's in his like late 40s you can really tell that he's a more mature sleuth than like some of the millennial sleuths i read who are a little more rash who maybe rush into things so that's kind of a fun take on it i really enjoy reading from a different perspective but diesel the cat oh my goodness he walks his cat i love that i love that so much i don't know why there's I don't know, let me know. If you have a cat, would your cat let you walk them? Do you walk your cat? I've never had a cat, personally. Um, I love both cats and dogs, but I think I'm a little bit more of a dog person, and that's just what I've grown up with, so I haven't had a lot of exposure to cats. So I would love to know, like, can you walk your cat? Or would they even let you? Or would they, like, leap right out of the way of the collar? I don't know. Let me know. But I love that he walks his cat. Diesel seems so friendly. He gets all this adoration everywhere they go. He takes him to work, which is incredible. And I love this. I was immediately sucked in by Charlie and Diesel's characters. Just the life they have. They have some, like, college students who live with them. And I really like that. They've been really interesting influences on the story. And Godfrey, the writer, is definitely a very arrogant, not so likable person. But I'm really enjoying his story coming out. The murder mystery starts pretty quickly. There is some setup, certainly, but it's not like a slow pacing or anything. Like, I feel like we got started. I'm feeling the pool. I'm excited. I want more. I'm ready for it, you know? So I'm really, really excited for this. The writing seems really, really great. I'm really loving the character details. I feel like they're able to convey so much about the characters with not a lot of words. Like, you're really getting their personality through snappy dialogue and just little bits here and there. And I can just picture everything so clearly. I really love this writing. So I'm so excited to continue and I'll give you an update when I finish this.
All right, I'm here with Nickel who's on the floor, but I have a final update for this. Wow, the ending for this, I, like part of me was like, I kind of thought maybe this could be the way it ends, but then I was so convinced of a different way that the ending ultimately got me. And then there was like another kind of side reveal with the subplot that I did not expect whatsoever, but was really excited for. So I cannot wait. Here little pitter patter feet, it's the nickel walking around. Oh, here we go, there's a little head there. Um, so yeah, I really, I'm having to pet her. She's not gonna let me film this. I loved the ending for this. I loved how it came together. I, the reveal itself, my like blood pressure was rising. It was so exciting. I was really, really excited to see how it turned out and it turned out fantastically. I really like the cop, like main detective on this case. I think her name is Kanisha and she was really, really great. I thought she was a really good like go-getter type. She was really fair. I don't think she was like one of those cops and cozies who's like very over the top but i feel like she was very fair i feel like it was a good mix of her being a bit stern with charlie and being like you're interfering like stop it but then also kind of appreciating some of his meddling so i liked that i'm excited to see if she's in further books because i think she was like the temporary detective while someone was out of town so i don't know if she'll be is heavily featured in the next one. I don't know, but I love Charlie and Diesel. They were absolutely fabulous. This mystery knocked my socks off. I flew through this. I could barely put it down. <sighs> like I only put it down to make food because I was hungry. <laughs> And that was more of a like a base need. So I absolutely love this. I would recommend this. This is a five star read for me, which I think is especially impressive for a first book in the Cozy series, just because there's usually a lot to set up, which is fair. I understand that. So for me, I oftentimes don't get five stars on the first read, but this one was so good. I can't believe it took me this long to pick it up, but thank you to everyone who recommended it. I cannot wait to read more of this series. I cannot wait to see where Charlie goes. I think there's like almost 20 books out in this series like there's a lot so I definitely have some reading to do but this absolutely success cannot wait so we're gonna start the Scottish Shire mystery series next I'm just we're, we're gonna get a little bit of a, a dog influence now and then we'll finish up with a well-rounded pet shop approach to everything so very excited and I'll see you guys soon So I am 126 pages into this Scottish Shire mystery series. I'm really enjoying this. I feel like I just love the Scottish setting. It's so beautiful. It always takes me a couple chapters, be warned, to get into the like Scottish like the language because she does use some of the words so you can not figure it out of course if you are an English reader but it's just if you're not used to some of the Scottish words it takes you a moment to kind of get into that headspace but once you do I find it's really easy to read I really enjoy the setting so it's like a charity social for this um, like food bank in town and Paisley and some friends are selling their goods and things at this like little market for the charity social and then they have the auction there's a bake sale and one of the not so nice people around ends up dying from something and that's kind of what <laughs> I'm trying to be vague so I don't ruin anything of course but that's kind of the general premise for this we've had a couple of cute Wallace Scottish Terrier moments with her going on a walk or being at home. It's not as prevalent as Diesel with the Cat and Stacks mystery, but this has been so cozy. I love all the knitting references. I don't personally knit or sew. It's not something that personally appeals to me. Um, I don't think I have the patience for it, but I really appreciate the craftsmanship that goes into that and it's very cozy, so I feel really good. This is a very springy, cozy mystery, so it's a nice touch since we are entering into spring now that we're in March and I'm really enjoying this. And I just like Paisley's tone as a character. She's very like frank. She's not very fussy or frilly. She's just like, this is how it is. And I like her, the little incorporation of like her moments with her son. Like there was just like a funny incident that happened with him with his schooling and it's just kind of fun to read about. I'm not a mom myself, but I like seeing the happy relationship they have and her relationship with her grandfather. And I think it's just really sweet. So I like the kind of like three generations, one home, plus a Scottish Terrier. What could, what could be better for a cozy? Got some really interesting characters. I had a little bit of a hard time with besides the Scottish language but keeping it straight all the characters at first with the social because a lot of people are introduced at once. But given a few chapters, I think it 
gets much clearer pretty quickly so if you run into that just a heads up but really enjoying this purple color on this cover is just so pretty. morning and I have some big reading updates. I finished this last night before bed, Murder in the Scottish Social, and then I started this one this morning. So I'm going to be giving you some updates while I do my makeup. Okay, so starting with my thoughts on Murder in a Scottish Social, I flew through the last hundred pages. I feel like the book slowed down a little bit in the middle. It seemed like it lagged just a little bit, but overall it was really, really good, really interesting. I continue to love Paisley as a character. I think she is so fun, very relatable, very pretty feisty but really puts a lot of thought into like her family, her friends, trying to solve the mystery. I really really enjoy her character and how she supports her friends and family, like she's got a lot of loyalty to them which is really amazing. There was lots of cute little moments with Wallace, our Scottish Terrier representation for this video. He is such a little ham, he is so adorable. I have met Scottish Terriers in person, I've never had one, but they just seem like such little darlings. <laughs> They're like still very like spunky and mischievous, which I think fits Paisley as a character very well. They're just really cute. I love all the cozy moments in this book. We get some really amazing moments where her group, there's like, I think their group is called Sip and Knit. So they will have like a little wine night with her like girlfriends and they'll all knit, except for one of them. One of them would be me in that group and they're like, I wanna hang out with you guys. I don't want to knit. So I love that she's still part of the group even though she doesn't knit. That's amazing. We don't want to exclude anyone just because they can't. it's so cute. I love it. Um, there's a lot of drama in this book around I'd say like kind of wealthy social circles because one of her friends is in a uh, pretty like wealthy social circle like private school for her kids and stuff and some of the moms that were the friend of the person who passed away um, are very very nasty. I was like, wow, man. Um, I don't know if that's what it's like in person. I hope not. Um, but they were nasty, nasty pieces of work. Um, but yeah, at the same time, would like smile and disarm other people, which was really funny. But I loved it. The ending I did not see coming. It was definitely a really exciting reveal. I did not predict like the who behind everything. Um, and was pleasantly surprised. I thought it was pretty good. I thought. I thought everything came together really nicely, so I think I'm giving this a four star read. It's not like all time favorite read ever, 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 but it's definitely a really strong one. And I'm definitely looking forward to reading book four now, which is Murder at a Scottish Wedding. I really want to read that one in the spring or summer just because I feel like weddings and that time of year are kind of synonymous, at least with, with um, the world I grew up in. At least it seems like summer wedding, summer wedding. So that's my thoughts on that. I just, I love Paisley. I'm really enjoying the family subplots because I kind of mentioned earlier, without any spoilers, of course, if you haven't read this, that her grandfather lives with her and her son. So she's a single mom. So it's three generations, one household, which I love, plus a Scottish Terrier. And her grandfather is a really great character, a little gruff, but very, very like sage overall. Um, really like him. Sometimes he kind of takes Brody's side and things because they're both kind of stinkers <laughs> with that. But I love, I love the family dynamics. I love like the little family moments where they're like going on a picnic or and they're taking Wallace with them and everything, and it's just really cute. But there's also like a subplot with the grandfather where he's trying to find like a missing relative, and this has been going on throughout the series. So I'm really curious about where that's going. It was kind of interesting the way it was some of the things were hinted at at the end of this book about that subplot, so I'm really curious to see what we'll learn in book four. But that's my thoughts on it. Overall, a really great series, beautiful setting. You definitely need to kind of get used to the language because there's a lot of Scottish like language incorporated, so the spelling is very different, but it's very easy 
but it's pretty easy to like sound it out like if you ever get stuck for a moment just I like read it like where I'm really thinking about it, how it would be said and then it's like oh that's what this word means okay um, so I really like that I like all the touches that the authors take in to really make it come alive like I've never been to Scotland I would love to go but it's just such a beautiful setting really unique love the cozy knitting I love like the bake sale like competition in this one that was really fun with the charity the charity setting and then just the family dynamics like if I was to recommend some of my favorite family centric cozies this would make the list so really love it definitely recommend the series so next we're going to talk about TC Lotempio's The Time for Murder is Meow Per and Bark Pet Shop Mystery and I did some digging on TC Lotempio this morning I was curious about the Tiffany Austin food blogger mystery I had read at the end of last year and I really loved it but I hadn't heard anything about book two and I was really excited to see that book two has been announced I'll put the cover on screen if I can find it and it looks really cute although I was kind of surprised because the cover it looks so different from the first book. Like they both kind of have a blogger website kind of feel to them, but the first one's so colorful, like the colors are incredibly different, whereas this one's more muted. So I found that interesting. Let me know what style you like better. But there is a book two coming out with that. And she also has, uh, this author has like three or four pet series. She's got the Nick and Nora series, which I think is such a clever, clever name, clever, way to pull in some like classic detective names into a mystery. There's like an urban pet shop mystery, like the urban pet tales shop mystery. And, there's, and then there's this one. So, I mean, she's got, she's got lots of pets, but I, I gotta check out some of her other ones. But this one, amazing. I am on page 76. It's just under 300 pages. So I'm getting close to the third way. So I'm getting close to about a third of the way into the book. It, there's just something about her writing that I really enjoy. I feel like I'm immediately pulled in. Like, just from the first chapter alone, I felt like I kind of knew the character. I was already interested in her story. So our character, Shelly, is a retired actress, very recently retired. She's like 38, and she's recently moved out here. She's taking over her late aunt's pet shop. And between the cat drama of trying to get her cat and then her aunt's cat to get along, which I find hilarious. <laughs> I've never had to introduce two cats, but... I could see where it, it might be challenging. Let me know, have you ever introduced two cats? Did it go well? I would be curious. Um, like I said, I've never had a cat personally, so I don't know about them as much as dogs, but I'd be curious to hear your thoughts on that. But the cats are just so cute. There's a Siamese and there's a Persian cat, and I just love them. They both have the attitude and they're just funny. Um, we also have already met a cute dog who's like a pit bull golden retriever mix, and I was just like, so cute so cute i want i want to meet one speaking of dogs after this we're taking the little one to sonic and i'm going to show you guys her face when i see the keywords that she knows means we're going somewhere hold on for that overall i really like shelly as a character i find her interesting she's got a strained relationship with her mom who is also an actress and is definitely not excited about her being a pet shop owner, like she's really looking down on it. It's interesting to hear about her aunt and how much the town loved her. And just to hear her like rehash her memories and stuff of her aunt is sweet. I'm excited for the pet shop to actually be open because it sounds like she's going to have actual pets because the store itself is more of a pet supply shop. I didn't know what kind of pet shop. So it's got like lots of pet food, pet supplies, stuff like that. But she is also going to have like some small animals from like the shelter that can be like adopted. So I think that's really, really cool. Um, you do get into the mystery pretty quickly. I wanna say like we've been, at, we've had this mystery started for a little bit now. So it didn't take too long. If you're someone who wants like the murder to happen on like the first page or first chapter this one might be a little slower for you but i really liked the build up i thought it was really suspenseful i thought it gave us introductions to some really key characters so i'm really excited to see where it's going to be going so yeah so far it's really strong start i think it's the writing style that's like the biggest pro for me all right and that is the finished look i like how it turned out kind of fun kind of rosy and yeah i'm really excited so i'm gonna try to finish this book today give you guys an update after sonic i think it's going really really great the two cats are just comical hilarious i like shell i find her to be a little bit 
abrasive, at least right now, because she was pretty pushy about her aunt's um, Cary Grant stuff being featured in the museum. Or maybe, but then again, I can kind of understand it because she just lost this person she loves. So she's probably not in the, like, I'm not going to be in the best mind this bet. Like, I'm not going to be in the best, like, headspace either. So it depends. I, you know, I, I think it's fun. I think it's a good mystery. I really like the colors on this cover. It's a different cover than the one that's currently shown online. This is from my library, so I think it's probably, pr like, from, like, the first time the, the book came out. And this is, like, the first cover or something. But really cute. I think book four for this series is coming out this year. So it's still an ongoing series, which I'm excited for. And, yeah, I'll give you guys an update in a bit about this. Let's go take a very, very cute and mostly patient puppy to Sonic. Here she goes. Nicole, do you want to go bye-bye? Do you want to go bye-bye? Yeah. morning and I'm here with an update and final update actually on the time for murder is meow this was fantastic I really flew through this it was really fun and quick and easy to read I like the main character shell I feel like she can be a bit impulsive but she also likes to have all of her ducks in a row and really like kind of think things through she had a guest from her past kind of visit the town and they were a really fun character that I really enjoyed and I'm hoping to see more from. I really liked them. I like some of the friends she's developing in town. I thought the ending was really solid. The mystery was good. I did kind of piece together the who behind everything pretty early on and I didn't really feel too swayed by any red herrings. I felt I pretty much stuck to that who um, the whole time but I still thought it was a, such a good ending. I thought it was really like fun, really high stakes, really exciting, really dramatic. It was a whole whole lot of fun. I'm really excited to see Shell's future in this town. I think, like I said earlier, book four is coming out, I think this year. So I'm really excited. The two cats are adorable. I mean, Per Day and Kalua. So I absolutely love them. This one is Kalua and Per Day, which I guess is a Cary Grant character, I think, if I'm remembering that right, because like, the ant has a collection, and I guess she named her cat after that character that he played. I'm not really familiar with him, but I thought that was a fun detail, and I'm really excited to get into book two when the pet shop, I'm assuming, is like actually open, so that'll be really exciting, and yeah, I really like this. I feel like T.C. Latempio's writing style is just really fast-paced, really fun, punchy, really easy to fly through, so I always have a really fun time with it. And we're yeah. just gonna wrap up pet sitting. I'm going home today. I'm gonna miss the puppy, but we're gonna go say goodbye to her real quick. And then that is this vlog. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I do post new book content every week on this channel. This vlog was especially good because I had all like four or five star reads. So very exciting there. Um, if you like anything with mysteries, whether that's cozy mysteries, classic kind of murder mysteries, thrillers. I do that all on my channel. So hit subscribe. I'll see you guys in my next video and let's go say goodbye to Nicole, okay? Bye.